A small portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by KiwiCo. So I was probably three or four years old the first time I ever watched the 1948 Disney film, So Dear to My Heart. And to this day, one of my favorite parts of that movie is the wise old owl, who throughout the film shares these poignant and inspiring phrases with eight-year-old Jeremiah, who is the main character. Phrases like, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, and nothing ventured, nothing gained. These have sparked my own love for phrases that help me shift my mindset and really feel like I can dig myself out of situations that are overwhelming and times when I feel stuck. As cliche as some of these phrases might be, I hope that you find a bit of inspiration and that you find it gently motivating as I share with you some very raw and real feelings and situations that I have been through and how these particular phrases, one of which was actually taught to me by the wise old owl, have really helped me throughout my life. Okay, the first phrase that I have to share with you, I believe absolutely belongs at the beginning of this video. I would love to encourage you to keep it in mind as you listen to the rest of what I have to share in this video or honestly any other video on my channel, any other content that you consume or news you watch or books you read or anything. It's the phrase, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Here is what a quick Google search tells us about the phrase. It means to take in a great deal of information and selectively disregard some of it as invalid or inapplicable. Okay, look, I do believe that there are things in life that are absolutely true with zero compromise, but I'm speaking more on the things that have nuance. The advice that you receive from strangers on the internet, making YouTube videos, sharing with you phrases that have changed their life. Viral TikTok trends, life hacks, uh, the latest self-help book, even what our close friends and colleagues and mentors tell us. It is something that took me a little while to grasp because I am someone who loves information overload. When I have a problem or a question or a little situation to tackle, I hit the books, I go to the internet, and I give myself too much information. It took me a while. I want to say I learned this concept in my early mid 20s. I had been an adult on my own for a little while, married, uh, have my own home to run, and started a family. And at that point, my information overload was so overwhelming that I felt paralyzed and not able to actually start applying principles or making decisions or solving problems. And you know what? If I'm being honest, it was probably someone in a YouTube video that said the phrase, eat the meat and spit out the bones, and it clicked for me. And I went, oh, it's okay if this information and this advice and this self-help material that I have been consuming isn't always 100% applicable to me. I use this sort of mindset when we're making big decisions like buying a house or making big life sort of changes or whatever uh, down to what homeschool curriculum I choose for my children. It's also helped me make more trivial decisions like choices for what we do with home remodeling or how we plan vacations or the paint color that I've chosen for our bedroom makeover, which is probably the next video going up on my channel. I have to say this because I think it is so important when it comes to this whole eat the meat and spit out the bones concept is that uh, some of the best, most nourishing advice for us is often the hardest to hear. So I don't want to use this phrase as an excuse to throw away truly good advice, especially when there's something that I need to change about myself and my heart or the way I'm treating someone or the way I'm approaching a situation or if I have bad habits. If it doesn't feel good, sometimes I can say, oh, pff, well, it's not for me. On the flip side, 
Sometimes there is bad advice that does feel good, but it's absolutely the wrong choice for me, and I know that. So this is where discernment and humility comes in moving forward as we even discern what is meat and what is bones. And I hope that's encouraging to you as we move forward throughout the rest of this video or whatever I share on my channel. Um, before I share the next life-changing phrase with you. I'm gonna throw it off to sponsor Natalie for the next 60 seconds. Thanks so much to KiwiCo for making today's video possible. We are big fans of KiwiCo around here and have been since the kids were tiny. KiwiCo provides a monthly crate delivered to your door that has fun, hands-on activities that follow the STEAM model, which stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. KiwiCo offers a wide range of crates in different subjects and age groups that go from infant to adult and everyone in between. And as the kids have gotten older, it's been so fun to see the progression of their knowledge and skills as they assemble their projects. Haley recently enjoyed her Kiwi crate that was all about anatomy, and my boys loved their Tinker crate where they assembled a battery-powered domino machine. It was super cool. The colorful instruction booklets are easy to follow and teach interesting facts along the way. The best part? Our kids don't even feel like they're learning because every KiwiCo project is such a blast to do. And they're my favorite gift to give to friends or nieces or nephews. If you'd like to check out KiwiCo for yourself, save 50% off your first month with them and help support my channel in the process, then go to the link in my description box, kiwico.com slash Natalie B and enter code Natalie B at checkout. Oh, I didn't want to tell you, I didn't want to tell you. I want some love that's true, yes I do. Okay, so the next phrase is one that you may have heard your grandma say. Actually, all of these phrases are from previous generations. So to put it lightly, Grandma had it right. It is a place for everything and everything in its place. And I am not perfect with this. In fact, I am not perfect on any of these things that I'm sharing with you. I am still growing and learning, but I have benefited greatly from learning and practicing this principle of giving everything that I own a home to go to when it's not in use. And it's one of those things that might sound super obvious to someone else who has a different brain than mine. I am a lever outer. I am someone who, who leaves stuff everywhere. I am a messy person by nature, but one of the easiest ways for me to tidy up and also to declutter things out of my home that I no longer need is to employ the principle of a place for everything and then everything in that place. So for me, a good indication that I need to change habits or maybe I have too much stuff in my home and I need to do some purging and decluttering is when I can't actually find homes for certain items. Sometimes that's because it's new and I actually need to establish a home for that item. It's, it's new to our collection. And sometimes it's not valuable enough to me to actually have a home for it. Therefore, it's time to let it go. This is gonna look different for everyone um, and through different parts of my life, the way I put things back or the way I establish homes for items has looked different. But the, the part of my life that it's actually impacted the most is my life as a mom. Helping my kids establish homes for their items really helps them put their stuff away and then that therefore helps me keep our home tidy as a whole. I'm literally looking at a Nerf gun on our front windowsill right now. Uh, hey, Judah, where does this Nerf gun go? Where is this Nerf gun's home? In your trundle bed. Could you please take it there? While you're at it, I see three Nerf darts. Could you take those with you as well? And just like that, it's taken care of. I have found that having established homes for items makes the act of tidying up around any place in this house go so much faster. Half of the effort of tidying up used to be just trying to find a place for something to go. Then it felt overwhelming. Then I felt stuck. I had decision fatigue and then I felt paralyzed and it was difficult for me to even get started with a very simple tidying project. And I discovered that it was exactly the same for my kids as well. So creating spots for those items to live when they're not in use has helped so very much. And it is true, a place for everything and everything in its place. I'm gonna go put these these towels in their place.
The biggest thing that the wise old owl ever taught me was the phrase, it's what you do with what you got. In fact, they have a whole musical number in So Dear to My Heart dedicated to this phrase because this little boy in the movie has big dreams and big goals and big aspirations for himself yet he does not have the resources or the privilege to be able to actually achieve those goals. But the wise old owl is always encouraging him that what he does have has worth and it has potential, even if he doesn't achieve the biggest, greatest, most glamorous goal. And this has been a phrase that has encouraged me so much throughout my entire life, but I really understood it when I stepped out on our family's journey of minimalism. In 2020, my husband and I went through all of our belongings and got rid of over 90% of the stuff that we owned. This was in an effort to simplify, reduce stress in our lives. And one of the biggest lessons that I learned was that I wasn't making do with what I had, but I was for years, seeking after the next latest, greatest thing, making impulse purchases, not being a good steward of our money, trying to live up to someone else's lifestyle or standard. Um, I mean, there was so much to why we had acquired so many things. And as we simplified and changed our spending habits, we really learned a lot using what we had materials on hand or resources or items to the best of our abilities was so much more gratifying than just going out and buying a brand new, shiny, beautifully packaged item. That is not to demonize purchasing something that you need or frankly even want, but our wants and needs shifted as our mindset and our habits shifted and as we grew up. Speaking of growing up and childhood, this nightstand that I have behind me was from my childhood bedroom set. We got it as a hand-me-down. And if there's anyone in my life that is good at doing with what they have, it is my mom and dad. My mom is insanely frugal and both of them are so good at using what they have be it a hand-me-down something that they purchased something that they acquired by any means and making the best use out of it i love that so much about them so as weston and i are looking toward this room remodel that we are doing here in our primary bedroom i am actually attempting to refinish this nightstand that I have had for most of my life um, and then look out for a matching one because these are everywhere at this point. They're pretty popular. And use the materials and the tools and the skills that I have on hand to the best of my abilities rather than just going out and buying something brand new. Shifting our mindsets into really doing a good job of using what we have been given, whether it is material resources or it's more inward. In the last few years, Weston and I have gotten more involved with ministry in our church and using the giftings and talents that the Lord has given us, not just inside our home and our small family unit, but beyond that into the community and having this mindset of using what we have to the best of our abilities um, has been incredibly fulfilling both spiritually you know, emotionally, relationally, as well as physically, like when we're doing stuff, renovating a home, using materials that we've had for years, repurposing items, refinishing <laughs> an old, ugly 70s, yellowy gold dresser from my childhood. And even though I'm no <laughs> furniture flipper or expert DIYer or anything like that, I am excited to see the result of doing with what I got. Your girl is on the struggle bus today. My house is an absolute wreck. I slept through my alarm. My kids are in that bickery sort of mood right now. I have a million things to do. I'm feeling very overwhelmed by the projects 
that we have planned, the errands that I have to do in order to make those projects happen. I've got to take kids to piano lessons. And the temptation right now is to just sit and scroll and not get started. And the phrase that has truly helped me in a lot of different areas, but specifically when I'm feeling the way I feel right now, is the phrase, the hardest thing to get is going. It's literally just stating a fact, but reminding myself of that fact is so helpful for me to sort of kick my brain in gear and go, if I can spend a little bit of time just getting going, the hardest part will be over. And for me, someone who has an ADHD brain, oh my gosh, why is that toy talking? That's so weird. Is there an off button? Yes, there is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, there we go, buddy. That's great. Thank you. What a perfect moment to mention ADHD and have something randomly just start jabbering at me. <laughs> I do have an ADHD brain, and in some ways that can really help me um, hyper focus and get a lot of stuff done. And once I've started something, I'm really great at doing a good job with it. Uh, but for me, the hardest thing to get is going. And until I figured that out about myself, I was constantly discouraged that, I don't know, I was lazy. And I'm really not. I'm actually one of the least lazy people that I know. And that's not to brag on myself. It's just a fact about who I am. I'm a really hard worker. But starting the job, starting the workout, starting the email session where it's so difficult for me to even sit down and just open up my laptop and get going. Starting dinner, starting the homeschool day with my kids. Things can feel really daunting sometimes, but I am so encouraged when I keep in mind that literally for me, I mean, this phrase is one of the truest in everything that I'm sharing today. The hardest thing for me to do is get going. And here I am, makeup is halfway done. And in the three minutes and 16 seconds that I have sat here and filmed, I feel loads better than I did almost four minutes ago. It's just amazing what a little bit of get up and go will do. And sometimes just telling myself, I'm gonna spend two minutes unloading the dishwasher or tidying up the pile of, of boxes that I have in the schoolroom, Or I'm just going to set the load of laundry, just get it going so that I can move on to something else. Just getting going. There is so much power in such a small window of time. Putting lip liner on while talking is probably not a good idea. Please hold. Okay, my quick five minute face is on. When I have learned to lean in, embrace, treat myself gently, and just get started in a way that sets me up for success, then the ball gets rolling and the things that follow seem to fall into place. If you were to say, would you rather sit and play with makeup and put your face on or take care of this massive pile of junk in your schoolroom?" I would absolutely say, let's do makeup. But somehow sitting down to do the first step, which today happened to be, you know, spruce myself up a little bit, it feels the hardest for me and for my brain. But now that it's over, and I've picked up my camera for the day and I've gotten that ball rolling and I've put my face on and I've chatted a little bit. Now that we've gotten started, I can keep going. No, the makeup might not be perfect. I could have sat longer and played a little bit more. Um, maybe what I shared with you, I didn't share it in the exact perfect way that I wanted to express it, but that's okay. The next phrase I want to share with you talks all about that. And while I tackle this room and the dining room and just get going with that, I'm gonna share with you the next phrase. Clap your hands and you feel stronger. Tomorrow you get another chance. Don't blame yourself under the circumstances.
Repeat after me. Progress over perfection. Progress over perfection. <laughs> and now my robot vacuum has decided to start cleaning itself as I'm talking to you. I'm not going to refilm that because done is better than perfect. Sharing that phrase with you guys, saying it out loud, um, is progress toward finishing up the filming of this video. I'm not gonna go back and say it again. Maybe you guys didn't even hear that vacuum start because I've got my mic on. But oh my goodness, this phrase, progress over perfection, has totally changed my life. And I think it might be because it is actually probably the most difficult phrase or mindset shift for me to implement with who I am. Sometimes when people claim to be, oh my gosh, sometimes when people claim that they're a perfectionist, I feel like it sounds like a humble brag. So I, I really don't want to come across that way. Like I'm a perfectionist. I just have to make everything perfect. No, perfectionism for me, is not me having to make everything look and feel and appear perfect from the outside. It's more so that I impose upon myself a specific level or a specific standard that I know in my heart of hearts is actually not even possible. It's a cycle of self-sabotage where I have a task at hand that I want to get done. I envision it at its pinnacle, at its absolute sparkling perfection, knowing that in the nine minutes I have on my timer before I have to leave to take my kids to piano lessons, there is no way that I could achieve that level of perfection. And at the end of the task, when that perfection, unrealistic level is not achieved, I'm upset with myself. We could go way deeper on this subject and talk about how this is vanity, that it's personal pride. I am aware of all of that and this is something that I have had to die to myself on, something I've had to mature in. And in 2022, I actually adopted this phrase as a way to encourage you guys. I started sharing this mindset, um, this mantra, if you will, to encourage you, but in turn, it changed my life. I could devote an entire 25 minute video to this subject alone. I don't have that much time today. There is a quote going around as a sound on TikTok or on Instagram reels. It's by Mel Robbins and she says, little by little is better than nothing at all. And I am not getting this schoolroom or this dining room to perfection. I am not scrubbing everything down and taking every little fingerprint off. I'm not going in with the crevice tool on my vacuum and getting every single little crumb out of the keyboard of the computer over here or around the baseboards. Sometimes it's the day for that. Today is not that day. I am not holding myself to something unrealistic as I move forward with something that I have on hand. This also helps that just get going sort of mindset that I shared with you earlier. Just getting going has gotten a bit easier for me as I've learned to let go of not having to have everything turn out perfectly or be done in a perfect manner. It's not necessarily the end result. Sometimes it's the method being used. I'm one of those people that can't relax in a messy house. So it is important for me to keep my house tidy. But the flip side of that is me learning how to relax in a messy house because I share this space with three young children, that should tell you enough right there, and a spouse. And I'm thankful that he's actually a pretty tidy person. We both appreciate a tidy space. But as we've matured, we've also learned to kind of let things go a little bit. Okay, I did not get to the dining room, but that can be done after we get home from piano. I have just a couple of minutes to say goodbye to this video before we have to head out, but it feels 
so much better here in the school room to get that pile cleaned up. There was boxes from stuff that we are ordering, uh, materials and other things that we need for our bedroom makeover. Definitely a bit of extra cardboard in this house when we do projects and stuff like that, but that is okay easy to move those on through and recycle. I actually had a little bit of help from Judah, which was really sweet. And it's not perfect in here. I'm looking at uh, a chewed up eraser, I think. Bits of an eraser on the top of this desk. There's crumbs on the floor that need to be sucked up. And while we head to piano, I'm gonna have the robot vacuum work on that for me. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was refreshing for me to be able to share my heart. Uh, put together sort of a chatty natty video over the last few days as I shared with you these mindset shifts and phrases, even if they're a little cliche, that have really impacted my life for the better. And I hope that it sparked at least a little bit of hope and inspiration for you. Um, we often feel stuck and overwhelmed, and that is just a normal part of life. Uh, but these mindset shifts and strategies have really, really helped me sort of dig myself out of feeling stuck and I hope it was encouraging to you as well. Feel free to sound off in the comments and share with all of us a phrase that has really helped you or something that you're going through so that we can pray for you and send you love. I love this community so much. Uh, you guys just rally around me and each other and it is such a beautiful and frankly rare thing to find on the internet these days. So I am grateful for each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. Thanks for spending a little part of it here with me on my channel and I'll catch you later. Thank you.